I got you stuck. I got, I got you stuck. I got you stuck. Fuck off the realness. I, I got you stuck. I got, I got you stuck. Fuck off, 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 off the real. The, the real. Welcome to the Audacity Podcast. I am the man on the street. Man, I want to get on here and talk about a little thing I saw this morning. And man, it, it, it's just crazy. But this is the world that we're living in, and we're upon this election cycle. And everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion about Kamala Harris and what is she? Is she black? Is she Indian? And my my question, you know, before we get started with this, with this conversation, is this. You know, what does race have to do with uh, um, um, this election cycle? I know we went through it with um, Barack Obama and everything like that, but it seems it seems though that it has come up again, and this time I I, I think that they're, they're just they're just blowing this out the water. They're they're blowing it out the water and. I don't, I don't understand why. I don't understand why. You know, um, we always say that we are Americans, but <laughs> I guess they didn't get the memo. Their memo is to say that she's not black. And what qualifies a person to be black? And, you know, her father's from Jamaica, born Jamaican. She, her mother's from India. And she she recognized herself as being black, but she does you know reference her her Indian heritage a lot, and I don't see nothing wrong with that. I don't I don't see one thing wrong with that. You know she's biracial, but a lot of people seem to have a lot of issue with her. And for me, the man on the street, I I, <laughs> I can't co-sign that. So what does race? have to do with this election cycle you know um former president donald trump you know he he, he's on this he's on this bandwagon and he he's out here spilling these type of um these type of lies now i'm not going to sugarcoat it he's spilling lies after lies after lie but you know he's not the only one you got a lot of people jumping on that bandwagon talking about she has just became black. Well, the last I look, when she looks in the mirror, all she sees is a black woman. But what does race have to do with the 2024 presidential election? I'm still trying to figure that out. So, you know, my boy Donald Trump was on, he went to the, the National Association of Black Journalists the other day. And this is what he had to say about uh, um, Kamala Harris. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is only on the ticket because she is a black woman? Well, I can say, no, I think it's maybe a little bit different. So uh, I've known her a long time indirectly, not directly very much. And she was always of Indian heritage and she was only promoting Indian heritage. I didn't know she was black until a number of years ago when she happened to turn black and now she wants to be known as black. So I don't know, is she Indian or is she black? She is always but identified you know as a black woman. I respect she went to a historically either black one. college. I respect either one, but she obviously doesn't. Because she was Indian all the way, and then all of a sudden she made a turn and she went she became a black person. Just to be clear, sir, do and you I believe think, that she's I think she is somebody a- should look into that too when you ask a continue in a very hostile, nasty tone. It's a direct question, sir. Do you believe that Vice President Kamala Harris is a DEI hire as I, some Republicans I really don't have know. Said. I mean I really don't know. Could be. Why come here? What is your message today? My message is to stop people from invading our country that are taking, frankly, a lot of problems with it. But one of the big problems, and a lot of the journalists in this room I know and I have great respect for, a lot of the journalists in this room are black. I will tell you that coming coming from the border are millions and millions of people that happened to be taking black jobs. You had the best. What exactly is a black job, sir? A black job is anybody that has a job. That's what it is, anybody that has a job. All right. And Mr. they're, taking, President, they're I... taking the employment away from black people. Hey, 
<laughs> you gotta laugh at that. He didn't do himself a a, a good service at that um <laughs> with that with what he just said. And my my thing is, I think Kamala Harris knows she was black since she was told she was black. Uh, I don't give a damn what she identifies that. That's what America is going to see her as, as a black woman. She could say she's Indian all day long, but Americans going to see her as a black woman. That's just it. Point blank. You know, I, I, I don't see the issue that race has to do with her um, becoming the next president of the United States. It, it, it just seems that it's certain people when they don't have anything to to talk about to you about or talk or they they can't hit you anyplace else, they're going to go to the race card. You know, and this is not the first time, you know, Donald Trump did this with um, Barack Obama, but with Barack Obama, he said that um, he was an American citizen. You know, what, what did he say he was born at? I forgot the country said he was born, at, but he wasn't born in Hawaii. So he's basically using the same tactic again. Now, I'll be the first one to say that if you if you running against her and you, you want to talk about her record, hey, by all means, go right ahead. I don't have an issue with that. You know, you could talk about a record in the Senate. You could talk about her record in the uh, uh, as, as the attorney general. You could talk about a record as a lawyer. But what does race have to do with the 2024 election? I just don't get it. I don't get it at all. It, it, it just baffles my mind that we are here in 2024 and we're supposed to be um, a society that's supposed to be looking past race, but we are not. We are not. And I believe Kamala Harris has somewhat changed the dynamic of this race um, conversation. Because a lot of people not going to vote for Trump. And I'm talking about white or black. I don't give a damn what race you are. They, they, they made it be known that they're not going to vote for Trump. And then the support that he did probably got from some black um, voters, he lost it by saying what he just said. You know, when the young lady asked him, what are black jobs? You know, he got defensive. He said that black jobs are any job that a black person has. See, I, I don't know the people that's advising Donald Trump, but what he should have said was, you know, if he's speaking on immigration and people coming across the border, all he had to say, you know, I, I want to stop immigration from stealing jobs from the American people. How simple is that to say? The American people. But he brought it down. He broke it down to race. I, I, I was reading something the other day. Well, I saw something the other day and they asked this guy, uh, um, what race does he, how does he recognize himself? Is he black? Is he white? He said that he's just a different shade of wheat. And the guy was like, man, that is a dumbass answer. But if you actually go look at wheat, wheat comes in different flavors from light to dark. Open my eyes. So why? People not in Donald Trump ears to open his eyes. And it's not just Donald Trump, man. It's not Donald Trump the only one that's saying things like this. It, it's crazy that sometimes, how they say, sometimes Kim folk, no, it's Kim folk, ain't sometimes you Kim folk? Because this guy, this guy this morning, you know, he still think that he's going to get that pick. But Donald Trump already got his vice president. But this clown, is on national TV, and he's spilling these type of lies. When Kamala Harris went into the United States Senate, it was AP that said she was the first Indian American United States senator. It was actually played up a lot when she came into the Senate. Now she's running nationally. Obviously, the campaign has shifted. They're talking much more about, about her father's uh, heritage and her black identity. This is something that's actually a conversation uh, throughout social media right now. There are a lot of people who are trying to figure this out. He brought it up. 
AP is the one that wrote the headline when she first came in to the United States Senate. Didn't talk about her being black, talked about her being the first Indian American senator. AP brought that up. I don't understand why you keep on repeating it, why the president keeps on repeating it, why those introducing the president yesterday George, keep actually, on repeating I'm it. George, actually, I'm not the one who keeps repeating it. George, you're the one that's bringing it up now. That's you. You've done I it. Understand why sir, you you've bring done it. Up you've done it three George, times. Every single answer George, you gave me. Now let me finish, sir. George, Every single you answer you gave, he repeated you the slur. You asked me, George. That's why I'm pushing back on you now. George, you right, asked and, me the question three times. I responded, but I'm And every single time you repeat the slur, that is my, exactly my point. You simply can't say that it's wrong. George, so then what you're saying, so then what you and I want to get off this topic because it's not the only thing that's going on. But George, now you're saying that AP is the one that slurred Kamala Harris because those are the facts. AP did not say that Kamala Harris is not black. She is biracial. She is Indian. She is black. You continue to repeat the fact that you continue to repeat the slur. I don't understand why you and the president do it, but it's clear you're not going to say that it's wrong. So here's what I would say to President Trump. The problem I have with Kamala Harris is not her heritage, it's her judgment. Every day we're talking about her heritage and not her terrible, dangerous, liberal record throughout her entire political life. It's a good day for her and a bad day for us. And see, and that's the only time you're ever going to hear me agree with Lindsey Graham. The first and the last time you're ever going to hear me agree with Lindsey Graham. Now, if you want to talk about her record, by all means, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Hey, you, you know, I won't have an issue with that. But to talk about her being a woman, to talk about her, her race, talking about her, whether she's Indian or black, I have a problem with that. The man on the street have a problem with that. It shouldn't matter. It shouldn't matter. We want to put the best person in that office. The person that's going to the, the, the work for all America, not just for black people, not for just white, Indian, uh, um, Asians. Uh, um, Mexicans or whatever. We want the best person in that job. That, and that, that's what it is. But it seems though that some people didn't get the memo because they're still saying the same old thing. The same old thing. And like I said before, some of, the, some of his constituents are actually getting turned off um, 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 by, by, by the way that he, he's, he's going on by carrying on this conversation. Who, 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 who's advising him? Uh, that's, that's, that's the question. Who, who's advising him on, on, on these issues? Somebody should be in his ear and be like, hey, Mr. Former President, hey, Mr. Trump, I, I think you need to leave that one alone. I, I, I really think that you need to, you know, go, go a different route because I hate to tell you that one's not working. Sir, that, that one's not working. And you continue to to preach this type of rhetoric, it's going to turn some of your voters off. It's going to turn some of your voters off that that follow you and that uh, um, voted for you. But Trump is a what seventy eight year old man, and a seventy eight year old man, you can't tell them anything. You can't. Sometimes you can't even tell young fools anything. You know, but 78 year old man. Oh, he's not going to change his ways. He's stuck in his ways. He's stuck in his ways. And that's what's going to burn him at the polls. That's what's going to burn him at the polls. It, 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 it amazes me that this guy was his name, Byron Donald. He's out there. He's protect I'm about to mess that word up. I'm going to go to another word. He's out here. Saying the same old thing that Trump is saying. But then you got Lindsey Graham, like I said before, the only person, the only, only time you ever gonna hear me agree with him. He's saying, man, we shouldn't even be talking about our heritage. We should be talking about her record. And that's what Trump should, should focus on. Focus on her record. Who, who cares if she said that she was Indian American? Who cares that she said that she was African American? Who cares? What's that? What does that have to do with the American people? What does that have to do with getting American people a uh, um, better paying job, insurance, uh, um, food on their table? That's what the American people cares about. But yet, you got these so called so called politicians talking. This bullshit.
And I'm trying not to curse on this podcast, ladies and gentlemen, but sometimes you just have to. Sometimes you just got to say, what the hell are we electing these officials for? Because if you listen to them, they're not talking about what affects us. They're trying to get the person in there that's basically going to do what they want to do. And like I said this before, everybody know I can't stand Trump. I can't stand the man. Never did like him. Never. Never, ever, ever. And I'm going to say this to the day I die, that he's in it for himself and his family. That's just it. He's in it for him and his family. Do you know, who's to say that Kamala Harris, when she gets in the office, she might do the same thing. But I saw what Trump did. Oh, I saw that. And, and his voters saw it as well. Because now, now people that voted for him, they got something to say. A Republican organization that is against Donald Trump is kicking off a fresh advertising campaign in critical states, showcasing former supporters of the ex-president who have now distanced themselves from him. The group announced a budget of $3.5 million for five 30-second commercials that will be aired on streaming services in Pennsylvania, Michigan, and Wisconsin three states that may ultimately influence the election's results. Additionally, the organization will display 69 billboards in these states featuring former Trump voters stating, I won't vote for Trump. Now his desire to do away with NATO. Donald Trump talks about abandoning Ukraine. He said he'll be a dictator on day one. If he's going to be a dictator on day one, he's going to be a dictator, period. That kind of stuff scares me. It absolutely scares me. A second Trump term would be worse than the first. A second term for Trump would be far more extreme. It is dangerous, outright dangerous. I cannot support Donald Trump again. I'd never vote for him again. He'll never get my vote, ever, ever. And those are people that actually voted for him the first time. Those are the people that voted for him the second time. So now they're fed up. They're fed up with what he's trying to put out to the American people. See, it's always with him. It's always me, me, me. They persecuting me. They doing this to me. They did that to me. No, you did it to your damn self. But yet, Instead of you getting on the campaign trail and talking about the American people, you want to talk about Kamala Harris race, whether she's Indian or black. Then you got this so-called Negro. He's saying that same old lie. And like I say, if Kamala Harris would have never say that her mother was of, of Indian, her mother was Indian. When American people look at her, they would say, that's a black woman walking down that street. That's what the American people would say. Now, you don't have to believe the man on the street. <laughs> Walk outside. <laughs> he gets stopped by the police. <laughs> Let's see what happened. But yet, but yet, we have this situation. Like I said, Kamala Harris said that she's she has an Indian mother. Her father Jamaican. Hey, let me talk about that for a minute. I saw a comment on one of my posts, and the guy said that the guy said that her father is Jamaican. She was raised in Canada. She's raised in Canada. Her mother's Indian, so she can't be black. Now, the last time I saw, the majority of men. From Jamaica or dark skin. So, like I texted, like, like I commented back to him. So, make, make that statement make sense. Last time I saw, Jamaicans are usually black. Not saying that they can't be light skinned, but they're still considered black. It, it doesn't make sense, does it? If you're going to talk about Kamala Harris, talk about her record. Talk, talk, talk about a record. I don't have an issue with that. I don't have an issue with you talking about her record if she didn't pass any laws or didn't do anything that she said that she's going to do for the people uh, 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 in San Francisco when she was the attorney general or, or this or that. And that's another thing that gets me upset. I hear black men and I hear some black women 
talking about when, when she was the DA and she was the attorney general, she arrested or she put a lot of black men in jail. But don't do no goddamn crime. What's she supposed to do? So that's just like me telling you when, you, when you go to your job, don't do your job. If you work at the bank and I walk in there to stick you up, just give me the money. If you're the, if you're the security guard at the bank, just let me walk in because you black, I'm black. Let me walk in. Let me walk out with all this goddamn money. Don't do your job by stopping me. You hear how asinine that sound? So what's she supposed to do? What, what, you got a lawyer. Your lawyer is black. What's your lawyer supposed to do? If you're a defense lawyer, what's she supposed to do? It, 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 it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense one way or another. She was the uh, a DA. She was an attorney. Her job is to put people away. If you break the law. Now, I can see if she did something and somebody, she put somebody away and they didn't do the crime. Well, it happens every day. It happens every day. But to sit here and say that she put a, a bunch of black men in jail. Well, did you ever think that they probably did the crime? If you don't want to go to jail, don't do the crime. That, that's just plain and simple. Then we talked about this the other night. We had this guy. And he had a lot to say about Kamala Harris. But I got to ask you about Kamala Harris. How you feel about her? She's a piece of sh She lacked professional competence and she worked on it by hiking up her hemline when she needed influence rather than researching. And she had a reputation amongst the trial lawyers of being lazy. She just hiked her skirt up and tried to flirt. And uh, she wasn't that good in the courtroom if not pretty bad in the courtroom. So I'm not surprised at what she does. She's 60 years old, and I think listening to her word salad and the way she talks, I think she's got early onset dementia and also some problems with menopausal complications. In this city years ago, I used to represent a whole bunch of pimps and hoes, and I know a hoe when I see one. And... I say this, I don't care, women, you do what you want to do if you want to have recreational sex, but when you do the casting couch or anything else for professional purposes to get paid or advance, you are. And, and, and see, that's the thing right there I have an issue with. That, I, I have a big issue with that, ladies and gentlemen. This man always speaking pro like this, pro black like that. And the first thing that he got a chance to do and the first question that the guy asked him, he wants to tear what? The black woman down. I, I have an issue with that. I really do. You know, somebody made a comment saying that, hey, that guy knows, he knows Kamala Harris. Well, if, if, if you know Kamala Harris, and I know he probably been saying this type of stuff way before she ran for um, vice president, probably when she ran for um, uh, attorney general, he, he probably was saying this. But what in God's green earth that has to do with her becoming the president of the United States. Are you mad because she didn't give you some? Th that's what it sounds like. It kills me when we have these people that are always talking this pro black. To pro I'm pro black, pro black this. Broke like that. But then when a black person get up, they do something that could benefit or or better yet, influence other black children to achieve to that level. We tear them down. Oh, she was a hoe. I know a hoe when I see a hoe. So what does that say about you? It's it's. Not just him, Dr. Umar, Charleston White. Uh, it's the, 
what's the what's the dude name? Donald, Tim Scott. The, the list goes on and on. That that didn't need to be said. All he had to say was, hey, what you feel about Kamala Harris? Hey, I don't think she'd be a good president because of her record. This is what she did. This is how I think that she will affect change. This, this is this is this and that. But he didn't do that. He tried to tear her down. I can't tell you who to vote for. I, I, the man on the street will never tell you to vote for. But it got to be about the policies. It got to be about what can you do for me? And that's what it boils down to. What can Kamala Harris do for me? What can Donald Trump do for me? I see what Donald Trump has done. I know a lot of people say, well, he gave us that money because of COVID. He didn't have a choice. He didn't want to, but he didn't have a choice. Oh, he did the test cut. Yeah, he did the test cut. But what, what did the test cut achieve? It didn't achieve anything. If you go back and look at it, it didn't achieve anything for the middle class or the lower class. That's why your taxes are so high now. The only people that got a break from that tax cut was the 1%. Go back. Research it for yourself. But see, most people won't do that. Most people won't research anything. They just go by what they cult leader says. Oh, that got to be true. That got to be true. See, at work, I wish I want them to come to me because we got a lot of Trump supporters at my job. Oh, I'll be waiting on them too. Oh, I'll be waiting for them to come say something to the man on the street. But you know, the man on the street look mad every day at work. So they won't say that bullshit to me. No, they won't because it's not going to fly. Not saying I'm the most educated man in the world, but I do pick up a book and read. I just don't believe what somebody says. I go research it for myself. Now, <laughs> back to Kamala Harris. She's running to be the 47th president of the United States. And I, I got to hear what she's going to do for the American people. You notice I didn't say for black people. You notice I didn't say for white people. What is she going to do for the American people? And it goes back to my original question when I started this podcast. What does race have to do with the 2024 presidential election? Not a damn thing. Not a damn thing. It's about policies. It's about what, a, what changes she's going to make for the American people. It's not about her being black or being Indian. That's what it boils down to. And for those that, that don't know what race Kamala Harris is or what does she identifies, she said it in her own words. You see a lot when you're the firstborn. I saw my mother and how she worked hard and she was full of pride and would never want anyone to ever pity her. She never complained about anything. But I also, I also knew how she suffered. I knew how she stayed up late at night trying to figure things out. She was a brown woman with an accent. I remember going into you know, a store and us being followed. I remember how people would look at my mother and make certain assumptions about her intelligence or her capacity or her right to belong. As the eldest child, you see this. My mother was very well aware that she was raising two black girls to be two black women. And she did that instilling in us pride in our culture and cultures. Always um, knowing that we would face all kinds of obstacles, but she never let us believe that anything could get in the way of our dreams or pursuits. My sister Maya is two and a half years younger than me. So at the age of two and a half, I was told, look after your sister. 
And it is something that is very much a part of just who I am, which is that look after those who need your support or need your help. And that has been what has motivated me to do the work I've done, to look after and protect people. You heard it from the horse's mouth. Her mother knew that she was raising <laughs> a black woman. Her mother laid the groundwork because she already know being a, 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 a biracial child, the obstacles that she's going to face. First, being a woman and then being a black woman. They heard it from the horse's mouth, what she identifies as. So the question of race should never come up again. Never. She attended an HBCU. She's an AKA. I, I, wh wh what else is there? I, I know what she need to do. She need to tell him to kiss her black ass. That's what she need to do. But because she doesn't, you know, I, I guess, unless you listen to um, Joe Brown, because she's not dropping it like it's hot or twerking or snapping her fingers when, he, when she talk or rolling her head, oh, she's not black. That's what it boils down to. You heard it from the horse's mouth, what she identifies as. Somebody need to give that, that video to Trump. Somebody, somebody commented, give me Trump um, um, presidential thing so I can send him this tape. Oh, my bad. He probably already got it. But knowing him, he doesn't care. He thinks that the, the average American person thinks about a person race. That might have worked back in the 60s, early 70s, 80s, the late 90s. Probably even the early 2000s. But times are changing. Time has changed. We have to step away from that type of rhetoric. We need that. We need to. We need to, as American people, talk more about the person policies than the color of their skin. But we got these politicians out here, out here. If they don't have anything else to say, all I could do is fall back on is the race issue. Now, the majority of people, I'm not going to say they are rednecks. I'm not going to say that they're low educated. I'm not going to call them because I really don't know. But the majority of them that follow Trump, they're going to fall for that bullshit. Some of them already have. You can't tell them no difference. Even the most educated person that I know that's a Trump supporter, he's falling for that bullshit. And that makes me, hey, the man on the street, I got to keep my eye on you. And you see, Tim Scott is an educated man. He's an educated man. And he fought for that bullshit because he thought he was going to get that job. And like I said earlier, this will probably be the... First and last time you'll ever hear me agree with Lindsey Graham, <laughs> the senator from my home state of South Carolina. I would never, I, I needed to play the lottery. If you was to tell me that I would agree with Lindsey Graham, I, I would tell you a damn fool. So ladies and gentlemen, this election cycle shouldn't be about race. It should be about what the, work, what, what the person could do for the American people. And if they got a bad record, talk about their record. Don't talk about the color of their skin. Because in this time and age, we don't care. We don't care. I don't give a damn if, if you're green. If you was a green person running for the president of the United States and you say that, hey, I'm going to make sure that everybody gets health care. I'm going to make sure that you get paid for the job that you do. I want, I want free school for every damn body in the U.S. I want, I, that's what I want. I want everybody, if you got student loans, you can't pay your student loans, we're going to work out a way for your student loans. I'm going to lower prices. I'm going to lower prices. When you go to the store, I'm going to make sure that you can be able to afford to get something to eat to put on your plate so your family won't be hungry. I'm going to make sure that we are the best trained military in the world. I'm gonna make sure I put people in positions to do what is necessary for everybody in the country, not just the 1%. That's the person you vote for. You don't vote for a person because of the color of their skin. If you do, you a goddamn fool. You a damn fool. But let me know what y'all thought about 
what the man on the street had to say. I know it's going to be a lot of people that's not going to agree with me. Some people will agree with me, but that's what makes a good debate. I don't want you to, to agree with everything that I say. We are not a monolith. We, have, we all have a, our own opinions. And my opinion on this situation is, what does race have to do with the 2024 presidential election? And with that, ladies and gentlemen, the man on the street is out. I, I got you stuck. I, I got you stuck. I got you, I got you stuck. Go off the rail.